they, they may, on how data analytics can be used uh, for smarter businesses and smarter government. For IDA, we have announced that we'll be rolling out a smart nation platform that includes a nationwide sensor network, a heterogeneous network, and a smart nation operating system that, includes a, that, that allows us to collect data and provide better services to the public and to enable a whole new era of new services to be developed and deployed by the private sector. Now, beyond doubt, data analytics will be the backbone for smart nation. So what is also important is to understand how the government and businesses can work together to make smart nation a reality. So let me start off, kick off this uh, panel by asking a few questions. So with an effort, with our effort to make Singapore a smart nation and we want to enable a safer, cleaner, greener urban living, more transport options, better care for the elderly at home, and a more responsive uh, public services. So from your perspective, how do you compare Singapore with what you're seeing around the world? Maybe you can start with Theresa. Well, um, as I was saying earlier, I think you all have uh, all the pieces and parts uh, for sure to have a really successful initiative. And I heard Steve call it earlier a journey that will never end, which is I think true. You're gonna to continue to look for what's the next thing that you need to do to continue to innovate. But in terms of where you all um, stand in terms of what I see globally, it's a mindset and a culture I think that Singapore has that's really important, which is a culture and a mindset of innovation and trying new things. You're very uh, digitally savvy, which I think is really important here. And I also see you being very progressive with what you're doing with your university system. Um, so, I, so again, I feel like you have all the pieces and parts. Uh, one area that I think that's going to be really exciting for you to sort of improve upon is that whole concept of the ability to create agile startups. So you can have a lot of opportunities to create this sort of economic development hub, an area within Singapore that attracts both internally uh, young individuals starting up new companies and trying things, along with the global and regional approach of bringing in new companies. And the important part of that will continue to be tools that they can take advantage of that are here locally that they can try and utilize and again try to uh, scale up, fail fast, and then roll out based on those learnings. But I think I give you very high marks for what you have here already in place. Thank you. Marshall, how about you? What have you seen around the world? Yeah, so um, I grew up in Switzerland and Germany, then moved to the US for a long time, so I apply, uh, apply for driver licenses in all, of, all three countries now. Uh, I submitted tax returns and I do quite a lot of uh, government services so I can I can testify that Singapore is far ahead in a lot of segments than, than these other countries. So I think that, that's very, very good news. Um, and I think you know, most of it is actually the people. And I think you know, when, when you talk to um, any of the government agencies here, here, you actually feel like they want to serve you uh, versus if you go to the BMB in the US, that might not necessarily be the case. Um, so I think that, that's a really, really good and I think that's that's like the, the basis for a smart nation is the people. So and and obviously it's smart people, and that's what Singapore has. So I think great great staff there. I think there's there's opportunities for improvement. Um, you know, for, for if you look at e-commerce, that's the part that I'm taking care of. E-commerce penetration in Singapore is significantly lower than in other markets. Um, and I think there's there's room for improvement of that. You know, if you look at an example, two percent of uh, all retail is transacted online in Singapore. In the U.S., it's almost 10, and Korea is 15. So Korea is definitely very far ahead, you know, and that then helps um, the citizens be more productive because they don't have to worry about shopping all the time. Uh, they can do more productive things or, or uh, do more fun things. Um, and, and I think these are the things that we're going to be looking for. Shopping is bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my wife tells me. <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> okay, the answer. What do you say? I mean, you work in LTA. Tell us what are the things you say. Yeah, I suppose uh, for me, the uh, three immediate uh, cities in the world come to mind. One is uh, Rio de Janeiro in uh, Brazil, and then we have uh, London, Europe, and New York states. Uh, I, I, as I see them and I compare to Singapore, I think uh, one common one commonality is uh, obviously you know see how all these cities are leveraging the fact that uh, uh, the sensors for all the mobile phones and whatever they can store, 
and then generating all the big data that they can they can make it open uh, for for innovation for true co-creation. But I think there are two other ingredients that uh, we are very different from, uh, from Singapore compared to them. One is most of these cities, the the one who initiates most of this smart city program is really at the at the at the city level, driven by the mayors. Uh, but in Singapore, I think we are doing it at the nation. And the fact that uh, it is, is the, 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 the drive is coming all the way from the top the Prime Minister. And with, with through IDA setting up the Smart Nation Framework, uh, identifying various, various domains, making sure that the different government agencies work together to I think that's very different compared to the others. And uh, you know, the, the, the last one, obviously, is uh, the way we are able to uh, leverage on our collaboration with Industries, the parties, further involved. Oh, Dave, you just gave everybody a speech just now about the things that you saw. Tell us what else do you have in mind as far as how Singapore learned from other countries. So, um, you know, I, I would agree with the other panelists, and I think Singapore is ahead in, in many domains of how we're applying uh, technology at a, at a national level. It's really, really impressive things from government services through growth of bits and pieces. You know, if I think about um, DBS, and I think about very selfishly about uh, what I need as a CIO. Uh, I made that very clear at the start. I need I need a big supply of uh, passionate technologies that I can bring into the organisation to help us reinvent uh, banking. Uh, that that is a woefully short supply in the country. Uh, so I think that the the, the one negative I would, I would play there is that we just don't have enough people that really want to get into technology. Pair us to you know, some of the cities like you know, the ones in the Silicon Valley, Paris to Korea, and frankly even in London or New York or some of these other places, uh, that's a big gap. Uh, so we run the risk of having other people come and build a great city, but you know, create a nation of passionate technologists. Interesting. A very different perspective. One, we seem like a nation with all the ingredients to innovate, but the other part is we have the manpower and the creativity to do that. Bill, what do you say? You know, uh, thanks to, you know, we, we've spent a lot of time looking at the evolution of smart cities. Firstly, I, I think I must applaud what IEA is doing here in, uh, you know, working on the vision, engaging the industry, you know, exciting uh, everyone. And uh, this is a great turnout. So, you know, we have to do more of this. If I, you know, I think the, the smart nations plans, it's, uh, you know, I, I believe we can be the first nation to work. Whilst others may have cities, you know, we being small but agile and fast have this great opportunity. Um, we've got a, a great sort of ecosystem, we've got an infrastructure, we've got, you know, uh, the, the uh, sort of uh, the innovation capital, we can do a bit more. But let me uh, sort of compare with what we've seen around the world. Uh, I'd like to, you know, also look at the other side, where we are great and where we can be better. Uh, against uh, countries that are almost, and I'll bring them up in the different segments, Korea, for example, uh, in Seoul, in uh, Songdo City, in Busan, you know, the smart ports in Busan, Seoul, in the smart city, uh, Songdo, a complete build up of a green hill, uh, you know, sort of a, a, a huge uh, park. Uh, I think, uh, you know, specializing in, in areas of connectivity, high speed broadband. We think about high speed broadband, that's going to be the place. And I think there are, once we are there, you know, there are opportunities for us to both catch up and level that. I think about smart cities, I think safety. Uh, it's a very important aspect in the you know era of uh, you know very uh, uh, serious threats around cyber security. Uh, whether it's mobile phones increasingly mobility becoming a very important part of uh, smart cities. Uh, whether it be IoT as fabric of uh, you know sensors are being laid out, you know the IoT rollout, and therefore you know the surface area of attack by the hackers. It's going to be uh, much 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 more uh, when you move IPv4 to IPv6. And then, you know, as a result, you know, you have hackers who get really hacked into traffic light systems and they've shown that with a $70 kind of uh, device, they can do that. So the surface area attack uh, increases. So security becomes a very, very huge uh, sort of uh, challenge. And I think Israel is really good at that. Uh, if I think about the sustainability aspect of smart cities, I think, you know, Amsterdam, I think the Nordic countries are very good at that. You know, zero carbon footprint and the way they design and they consume. Uh, and the way they sort of uh, put their entire ecosystems together. And I think about, uh, you know, innovation capital in terms of mobility. 
again, uh, not just Korea, but interesting applications coming up from Silicon Valley. And uh, that, again, it's another, another area that's moving very, very fast. So those are certainly areas that we are plugged into and we're watching and you know, uh, making sure that uh, we're feeding back into Singapore Inc. and helping and uh, bring some of these capabilities back into the game. Okay, Bill, I mean, you, you, you mentioned certain um, uh, challenges uh, going ahead, uh, cyber security and things like that. So uh, are there two or three opportunities or even challenges that you think that Singapore should tackle immediately? Certainly, I think uh, a few areas. Cyber security is hot because you can't have a sort of a smart nation enabled by IoT and all that if you can't have a safe environment. If things get hacked into, whether they're sensors, your above-ground boxes, you know your command systems, uh, you know your sort of uh, networks get hacked into, it's a serious uh, trouble for everybody. Trust, especially for Singapore, which is a, a what I call a trusted business hub. And if it gets an attack, and every other week we have one, it's going to be dead serious uh, for us. Uh, it's going to put backwards a lot of things we do. So this is an area that I think the challenge is, you know, there are not enough people in this space. You know, we've done some statistics globally. There are probably about a million plus uh, shortage in terms of talent for people who wants the, uh, the uh, who's required in the cyber space. And uh, what's more challenging is the bad guys are always a couple of steps ahead. Uh, and the need for the good guys to figure out and to wait for the attacks to come by and to be proactive, it's a huge challenge plus the lack of our manpower. So that's an area that I think we have to try and uh, work together, you know, in the ecosystem, in the value chain, uh, not just Singapore, but, you know, in the globe, uh, and bring the best out, and uh, especially so for a, a, a trusted business hub. The other area I think it's very key, it's in the area around analytics. Analytics uh, data, and uh, you know, all of you probably are aware in the good uh, uh, sort of speeches this morning by all the speakers. Uh, it's again another area that is uh, uh, very key. It's about extracting the data, and you get gazillions of data. How do you make the best use of this data, and to create, uh, you know, to, 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 to resolve complex uh, problems and uh, to really make decisions on very quickly. So it's also with these thoughts that you know, Singtel has uh, committed about five hundred million dollars to push into what's called the uh, analytics, cybersecurity, and uh, smart cities. And that's essentially what we're going to do, not just within ourselves, very important to engage the ecosystem and engage startups and, uh, and uh, uh, VCs and to really uh, look at how do we solve this problem together because we do not believe we have all the answers. Okay, so get more good things out of this smart nation and make sure we protect ourselves from, from the, the bad side of things. Well, anyway, the banks are very good at that. So Dave, you want to tell us more about what are the three well, three major opportunity challenges and see going forward to uh, Yeah, so uh, it's pretty much in line with Bill. I mean, cyber security <laughs> for me is one. There's two elements of that. One is sort of prevent uh, uh, protection of the sort of hacktivists. The other is around all the authentication, you know, to have some way of having a national framework where we can easily and simply authenticate and verify somebody. You know, today, if you want to open a bank account, you still have to come to a branch. Well, how horrible is that? It's because we don't have a, a, a better technology, which is, uh, uh, which we can deploy. So, you know, the ability, and this comes to the mobile devices or whatever else, so whoever, whenever you touch it, wherever you touch is, I can 100% authenticate who you are, would be a massive uh, uplift for, for banks. And I think, you know, we, we have an opportunity to do that in a, in a, in a nation this size and link that to some government framework as well. The other is around this whole thing around um, generating passionate technologies for us to absorb. I was very excited with the fintech startup that, that you guys are uh, pushing that was announced a, a couple of days ago. So, you know, where we can, we're partnering with you, the whole uh, A Star and I Squared R research community is a fabulous one for us to plug into. So, you know, we are, we are really sort of desperate to try and get our arms around as many of those people in Singapore as we possibly can. Right now, we have to go offshore. I don't like going offshore because. You know, uh, I actually mentioned that the two pizza thing, well, the pizza gets cold when you ship it offshore. You need the pizza and the people around the pizza in one place. Uh, but if there's not enough in the country, then that's very people to achieve. And I think we risk losing a people. So those sort of people initiatives are very, very important and the cyber security. Okay, Tom Xiao, do people hack into the ERP system and get advantage of something from the ERP system? <laughs> but I think uh, I, I would like to just uh, add other points uh, to this conversation. Uh, you know, for, for the Land Transport Authority, we see tremendous opportunities in, in the way we can uh, leverage uh, open data and all the sensors out there. 
Uh, just to give a, a sense, you know, today, every day, uh, 6.6 million people take the public transport, trains or buses. And then of these, you know, many people, uh, two-thirds of them take, take the buses. So through, through such transactions alone, fair cut data, we get a huge amount of data for us to actually look into data, look into data analysis. Uh, moving forward, really, I think the opportunity to, that we can, through the Smart Nation uh, framework that IDA is putting in place, allows us to work a lot more closely with various government agencies and cross share data. And certainly the data to SG the SG uh, uh, initiative is the right, right hand of the um, But really, I think uh, our land transport through our own uh, uh, fair car data and as we later move into being, being able to obtain uh, taxi and sensors and buses and sensors, and we think we see a lot of opportunities to collaborate a lot more closely with the telcos. Really, because every one of us carry a, a mobile phone. And, and, and that is the, really the sensor that allows us to know really where everyone is. So can you imagine if we merge telco data with transport data, there's a lot more that we can really understand travel patterns and then look into how we can seriously uh, look into enhancing the travel experience. As long as we get a better ride. So anyway, Marcelo, you have been in the... Uh, uh, there are some exciting news uh, about St. Paul's going to e-commerce related here. So, what sort of opportunity and challenges do you see for Singapore in this area? Yeah, yeah. So, um, first of all, I agree with all the other speakers, but you know, the key thing for Singapore Gold, you know, that we're a male company, so our parent company is a male company. A male, obviously, not really a growing business, actually, plus the opposite, a dying business. So we had no other choice to innovate. Um, and that seems to us, innovation meant literally piloting, testing, um, and failing very fast on many, many things before we actually discovered something that would actually work. You know, and who would have ever thought that a meal company could eventually provide the technology and have all the e-commerce sites for brands like Adidas all across Southeast Asia, the Levi's we just launched in Korea, even though the Koreans are very advanced, they still trust us to do that. Um, so I think for, for the audience, I would recommend test and pilot and then fail fast if it doesn't work and learn from that is probably the key thing. Um, we also have some very exciting announcements. So we just we just announced that we're going to invest 182 million into a logistics hub together that we set up together with the government um, in, in Japanese to serve all of Asia Pacific and make is uh, Singapore as kind of like an e-commerce hub uh, for Asia. So I think that that's very exciting news for us. Okay, Marisa, what about from your perspective? What are what do you see as maybe two or three big opportunity challenges? You know that. You would have to see, if you were living in a spot nation, you would have to see happen. Well, I think there's three opportunities here. One is um, sort of the jobs creation, economic development, and educational uh, forwardness. And one of the things that I believe that the opportunities here are to start very early uh, at the elementary school age and really work with the children. I tell everybody, um, begin to code use coding and development, teach the technology tools very, very, very early. Because I can't imagine many jobs in the future that are not going to need coding and development skills of any type, even basic. It's like I told you, I used to take typing. I was never very good at it. Now forget that. It's coding. Coding, you have to do coding and develop engineering classes are just going to be absolutely critical. And I think knowledge is power. Uh, and educationally, to have those skills very early is, is super important. All the way through the university uh, level, collegiate level, where you can teach big data analytics and cloud skills and capabilities. And I know that you all are doing that already. We've worked with some of the groups, uh, a lot of the universities here, are already creating new curriculum tracks. So new, really learning the new skills and tools. Forget the old, new to the new learn and understand that. Also the ability to translate the data, the IT side into the business side. Um, it is definitely a new trend for data scientists, uh, data officers. Uh, the skill sets that are required are that individuals not just uh, understand the tools that you heard about some of those tools uh, this morning that are required for big data, but what do you do with that data? How do you interpret it? and change government and business in the right way. Um, these things lead to the first I talked about, which is um, uh, economic development jobs creation. If people have the skills that they need, they're going to start doing 
uh, economic development of new companies which create jobs. So I think those are all the opportunities. So I sort of wanted to focus that on education because I agreed with all the rest of the panel members. I think the challenge is just real quickly that uh, we, we did chat about this is having transparency with the citizens. Um, as uh, the Singapore government moves to a smart nation, the citizens need to have confidence in the data that's being collected and openness and transparency of that and be able to answer the questions and provide openness of the tool. Because otherwise, um, you know, a lack of trust will be a lack of trust. So I think just moving forward, that will be just a challenge that you'll have to make sure you have the right laws and mandates for that. And not to lock down innovation. Don't set up mandates and policies that lock out innovation. Because you, Singapore is so open, and I think that's one of the great things about um, the government here, that you all really think at a regional and global level and really keep that up because it's, it's really leading edge and uh, keep, keep on the throttle, full speed ahead. Great. Now we are running out of time, so I just want to have the last few statements. In terms of uh, collaboration between industry, business, uh, we talked a lot about innovation, we talked about the need for manpower, we talked about making things safe so that we can progress. In you know, just very quickly, what are you know what are your thoughts about business and our movement together? Is it are there areas we need to improve on, or yeah. what, what do you see? So maybe it's not be built. I, I think uh, you know by and large, the government sets a clear vision. You know, gets the funding policies in place, gets the uh, agencies involved engaging the uh, industry, uh, and I think they do a really good job. I think you know balance to that is you know not. Whilst we have this really good uh, sort of capitalist role that the government plays, it's also to make sure that uh, you know leave the industry to do what they need to do, innovate to create that vibrant. Uh, and, and I'm sure we have, we've, we've got a healthy balance uh, moving forward. Um, and you know I think it's uh, an area where we could probably do more. It's uh, how do we create with the startup community? I, I you know just want to pick up a couple of points on the panelists earlier. If you look at you know this exciting world of what's uh, going to happen in the smart nation, and we will be, I believe, strongly that we are the first uh, nation to achieve that. And uh, and so if we do that, when we do that, you know there is a lot of opportunity for IP that's been created here, uh, whether by our indigenous indigenous companies or you know companies that we attract and then globally and then have them you know create the IP setup here. Uh, it's very key that we try and anchor that. And I think that's an area that we could do more. Uh, compared to what I've seen in Israel, compared to what I've seen in Silicon Valley, um, and uh, even uh, in Boston. So I think uh, it's an area that we can probably try and uh, do more. And again, positioning Singapore as a gateway to Asia, as a hub uh, to the region, you know, attracting uh, the rest uh, with, with that sort of proposition. Um, as I think also the other piece is, in this whole smart nation, you know, sort of vision unfolding ahead of us, uh, I know all of us here are gigs, we, we, we belong to more the supply angle, and I just want to speak uh, maybe a one minute on the uh, demand side. I think it's not just te technologies, uh, innovations, it's very important that we think at the end of the day, you know, with a 